and welcome to the Low Carb Lifestyle Long Weekend, all about the girls. Um, it's really lovely to be able to share all the information that I have buzzing around in my head with a like-minded group of people within a group of people. And I really, really love to thank Tracy for putting this all together. I know that it's a tricky time for her and it takes a lot of energy and she is the girl to get the job done. So thank you, Tracy, from the bottom of all of our hearts for putting this together. And let's get stuck into it. So I'm Linda. I'm from Perth in WA and I've been in the low carb lifestyle space for about 10 years now. Um, big, big journey along the way for me. And today I would love to share with you all of that I know about the pathway that led me to optimal health. So perhaps I can share some insight for you. And if you take a few things away from today's session, then that's all you need to do. Um, but for me, my pathway has consisted of food which is, you know, obviously the, the cornerstone or the um, starting point for me and for many. Mindset has been huge. Mindset is a big subject and I'm sure there is a talk totally about mindset because it deserves its own little spot on the podium. And movement for me has been massive. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about my health journey um, and how movement just sort of fell into my lap and became something that is a focal point for me and helps to keep me on track, helps to keep my mind on the pathway to optimal health is the word that I'm going to use. So the first steps, if you're new to low carb living, then you will already have discovered or you may be on the breach of discovering that it is a minefield out there. There is so much information. There are so many perspectives. And the great thing is that there's so much new science that we can all take on board. But I guess it can feel a little bit daunting. I guess at least now there are many people that have walked the pathway and can share their health back in the day. <laughs> when, I, when I first found out about the low carb um, way of living, there wasn't much support and not much science and a lot of uh, weeding out what felt true to me uh, to keep me on path. But the best place to start, of course, is with a plan. So if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um, so having a, a smart plan, I guess if you're new to the world of health coaching or coaching in general, you might not understand the smart perspective, but smart, SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timed. So specific is something like you are going to stop having sugar in your tea. That's pretty specific. It's pretty clear. You can't get that mixed up with anything else. It's measurable because it's a cup of tea and a spoon of sugar and you can see what it is. It's achievable because it's part of your goal it's part of your mindset, it's part of where you want to be if you're trying to lessen the sugar uh, burden in your, in, your, in your plan. It's relevant because it's relevant to cutting out sugar and it's timed because you can say, by this time next week, I won't be having sugar in my tea anymore. And it's, that's a smart plan. It's pretty, um, speaks for itself really, but that's what it's called. It's amazing. Health coach, finding a health coach to help you along the way is also important, especially for the first few months while you get your head around change, because it will be change. There will be things that you might find a little bit difficult to overcome. And a health coach who's been there, who's walked the path, who knows what it's like to be making different choices is a great place to start to start and decluttering decluttering your life decluttering your mindset decluttering your habits decluttering where you live and restocking so out 
out with the bad and with the good. So letting go of things that aren't serving you or aren't giving you any purpose anymore and restocking with um, choices that are better for you, that are keeping you on path to where you want to go. So talking about choices, there are, besides movement, there is environment and food and mindset. So environment is all the things that you have around you that become holistically you. So it's your where you sleep, it's where you eat your food, it's your habits to getting your food, it's your environment that you live in, are you living in a supportive environment, are you living with a bunch of people that think the same as you or, or are you by yourself. Food is obviously about where you buy your food, what it what it looks like, how it's packaged, and mindset is, is huge. It's about uh, getting yourself to a point of view that can be self-loving without being self-limiting. It can be a mindset of joy, of finding out the new you, the new way that you think, the new that way that you do things. So mindset is uh, really important decluttering so we've all heard about Marie Kondo and I guess for me I have been a person that has read the Marie Kondo book and has Marie Kondoed my home and it's important to declutter because when your mind is busy and your home is busy they both uh, keep you busy away from things that you might need to concentrate on to keep on the path that you want to be on. So for me, decluttering started way, way back. And I'm, I'm not perfect at decluttering, but I'm getting better at it. I'm practicing um, getting better at a lot of things. But decluttering is huge for me because it helps me if my space is clear and my home is clear and my life is clear as it can be at that moment in time. It helps me to think a bit clearer and stay on track. Um, so I guess when I was travelling through Europe on my bike with my husband, we used to take a little five kilo bag, which isn't much, because I had to carry it on my back. So I couldn't have it any bigger or so I couldn't travel. Um, so we had a five kilo backpack on our backs and in the backpack was you know, a change of underwear, a dress in case you went for dinner, a change of shoes, a cosmetic bag, which happened to be the heaviest bag with, a, you know, a little hair shampoo and a toothbrush and toothpaste and a lipstick and mascara. We had the bare necessities in these bags and we lived out of them for a month at a time while we would, off we would go to Paris with our bikes and our backpack and that was a fairly cheap holiday because we, um, didn't use a vehicle, we didn't use public transport, we just rode everywhere with our backpacks, so they couldn't be heavy. And I suppose when I got back to Australia and looked at my massive wardrobe of clothing, I thought, heck, what am I going to do with all these clothes? And it began my point of change. I guess that was my point of change to start decluttering my wardrobe and as I decluttered and got rid of things out of my life that weren't useful to me um, I noticed that my mind became calmer and my life became more organized and I know that it's difficult to get rid of things because they've cost you money and you think you need them but if you can switch if you can begin to practice this switch of changing your mindset to donating or giving your things or your cluttering things or your stuff to someone else that can um, cherish it more and use it more then it's easier for you to offload it in some respects so that's that's my mindset and the same thing happened with my pantry I decluttered my pantry switching out as I began to realize what foods did what to me or my family I switched things around and made my pantry neat so when I go and cook now I can see the spices that I want to use that are just there you know the salts there the almond meal is there if I want to bake the all the things I use for baking are in this space that's really neat <laughs> because for a while my pantry was a topic of discussion in my family it was oh my god 
It was a mess. It was crazy. So cluttering is also talking about physical stuff. It's not just so it's not just physical stuff. It's also old ideas, toxic relationships. And clutter is anything that's not there to support you. So if you have uh, thought patterns that aren't helpful or ways of doing things that aren't helpful, that's that can be tagged as clutter as well. So once you can start getting rid of things that don't serve you well is another way of looking at clutter, then you can move on and replace those unthought, unuseful thoughts with helpful self-building, self-believing thoughts that will um, enhance your life and make it much calmer beautiful space. So food sources, where do you source your food? So I know that the shopping centre is easy and I guess we've been um, kind of sidelined into going to the big four, to the shops, to the shopping centres to buy your food because that's where everything else is. You know, if you need shoes or you need um a light fitting or something there's always a shopping center involved so beginning the journey it's important to think about where do you source your food farmers markets are a great place to source your food from and you will find them locally they're everywhere now they're popping up all over the place and farmers markets are great because they get you in touch with your local tribe so generally at farmers markets you will find local people that are growing their own fruit, their own vegetables, not or some of them their own meat. Where I live uh, close by to me, my local farmer's market, I do get meat as well. So you will get meat there. And the great thing about farmer's markets is generally they're outside. So they get you out in nature, they get you out in the environment, they get you meeting local people who are foodies or um, interested in the whole food story for themselves. So in that group, you will find your local, tri local tribe. And as well, you can take your own bags and your own boxes and you're not fighting for car parking space or breathing in car fumes at the shopping centres. Uh, there, there's a lovely place to go and usually they have like a face painting thing or a craft thing for kids to do and they're dog friendly so you can take your dog and it's a real healthy vibrant lovely society to get involved with and the good thing about being at a farmer's market is you may find out who is your butcher and where is your meat coming from um, so important to have an idea of where your food where your meat comes from especially because how they treat the animals, how they feed the animals, um, and how that animal gets to your plate is a really valuable part of sourcing your food. So let's talk about mindset and you changing in habits and changing in lifestyle. So by the time that you're seven years old, you have made or you've formed all your ideas about what life is, what life isn't, how you do things, what your routine is, how you react to things, how you process things. That whole lens has been set by the time that you're seven. So if you're 39 or 45 now and you're, you're thinking about changing some of those ideas and some of those mindsets and some of those ways of doing things, it's a complete change in lifestyle. So you have to be kind to yourself. You have to give yourself some grace and some space and some nurturing and just hold yourself valuable because it will be a time of stress and a time of learning new ways of thinking and old ideas will be challenged as you begin this journey, as you go further along because I know as human beings we think we know everything we do we think we've been brought up to know everything and to be challenged with a change in habit or a change in lifestyle can really upset the apple cart and get you off, off track so steps of change 
Changing your mind can be easy or it can be a little bit uh, more difficult for you or a, not difficult, but a bit more of a journey than what you're expecting. But the good news is that acceptance is the first part of change. And I guess by being here today, by listening to this, all of these uh, people talking about lifestyle change and, you know, hormones and food today at this summit, it's part of you accepting and knowing that there needs to be a change for you. So that's the great thing is that you've already made that acceptance, realising that there's a change that needs to happen. You might have had a health challenge or someone you know might have had a health challenge. You might have a little bit of belly that is being stubborn and you can't get rid of and you want to get rid of. So being present for this time for yourself is part of the first step of change. You also will uh, need to understand that there's a counter mindset. So counter mindset covers areas of limiting beliefs of negative thoughts, body image. So these are all things that have been uh, spoken to you that you've been watching that you've been learning about since you were tiny, since you were small. You know, we could even go as far as to say that the way that you walk is an ingrained pattern from your parents, the way that you think, the way that you cook your food, the way that you shop for your food. And that comes from your parents, that comes from their parents. So it's a generational belief that comes through um, to you. It's your own way of viewing the world. And if we have to change that view, if we have to turn corners and leave those old thoughts behind we've got to be feeling comfortable in ourselves that we have a new way of thinking that we have something to take the place of the old thought pattern so we still can feel safe and we still can feel secure that we know what we're doing and where we're going so flipping the switch is another way of changing your mind flipping the switch is finding the positive so just for instance, if you were wanting to have a chocolate biscuit dipped in your tea, which is what I used to really enjoy, ginger nut biscuits tipped in my tea, mm -hmm, that was the best thing. Um, flipping the switch is finding the positive of why you don't want to do that anymore. So the, obviously the positive is that gingerbread brisket has no nutrition in it for me. It's not building a muscle. It's not building a hair follicle. It's not building a fingernail. It's building nothing it's just giving my body something to do whereas if I changed that if I flipped the switch and grabbed a handful of macadamia nuts or a piece of dark chocolate there is some nutrition in there that my body will acknowledge and will enjoy and will will know how to use because your body will only recognize food that is in its natural state that is something that it can use it it will understand vitamins and minerals it will understand protein and fats and carbohydrates but it won't understand um, ingredients in food that you can't uh, that you can't pronounce it won't understand them so understanding the why is the childhood habits motivation and willpower are they enough like it is well known that 25 percent of people will give up on a goal after the first six weeks and 60 percent quit after the first month and why is that we've been told that motivation and willpower are the way to go you've got to get motivated you've got to have willpower and you will succeed but high achievers know that this isn't true the only way that you can succeed is to walk the path and learn from your own mistakes or your own lessons or your own misconceptions of how you're doing things and how you can do them better. That's the only way to make uh, change in your life with small changes, small changes, practice making small changes so that when you have to make the big changes, you're OK. You're cool with that because you know that you can come out of the other end. And you're OK. Everything will be OK and you'll be safe. So failure, is it real? What is failure? Failure to me is just a lesson that we've learned that hasn't gone the way we've expected it to go. But out of that becomes 
a way of learning. It becomes a way of knowing that what we thought we knew isn't right. And here we go, we've got to try this again and um, find a new way or a better way of doing things so that we can learn the lesson and move on. Movement is huge. Like I said back, movement for me has been a massive thing in, in my life. Food was huge. Food was massive. Mindset, of course, is always ongoing, but movement has just got a little special thing of its own for me. So movement comes in all forms, gardening, dancing to your music in your lounge room, crazy like that. How beautiful is that picture of walking? Walking in nature, I always say to my um, clients that walking in nature is like your meditation. Like when you're walking in nature, you can notice how does the ground feel under my feet? Is it crunchy? Is it, is, am I walking in sand? Does it feel soft? Is it hard on my ankles? Can I see any wildlife in nature? Is there kangaroos around me? Are there rabbits? Do I hear a bird singing? Is the sun shining? How are the leaves looking? Is the smell, has it been raining? Is there a smell? So when you're in nature walking, it's a great time to just let your senses relax and absorb all that nature has to give you. It's, it's a really wonderful gift. Hit, hit training is great for burning up um, extra energy, for building muscle, for improving your cardiac health, but you can't outrun a bad diet. So dancing, gardening, walking and hit are just a few of the ways that you can strengthen your body, add value to your life, stretch your outcome, bring some joy, watch nature, plant things and get them to grow, lift weights and feel your muscles growing in your thighs and your hips and your butt um, is the best thing that you can do. Movement is great for building your bones, for adding muscle to your body, for increasing or improving your metabolic rate. It's fantastic for flexibility, um, but like I said, you can't outrun a bad diet. Um, movement also improves depression levels and cortisol. It actually lowers cortisol. There's a whole mechanism behind movement and blood glucose that cortisol is involved with and movement will help to alleviate that. So. I became a Pilates instructor about three years ago now, and who would have thought I would have been a Pilates instructor? Honestly, it's not something I had on my life lifelong plan. I know back in the 80s, I wanted to be an aerobics teacher and that never happened because I had a family. So Pilates became the thing, the thing for me. And I started Pilates because I had injured my back years ago uh, riding my bike of all things after a few falls I had injured what I thought was my back and it put me on the couch for a good couple of or oh, at least six or seven months I was on the couch feeling really depressed popping neurofen left right and center feeling better about my life because I thought the neurofen you know was doing good things for me it wasn't um, and it wasn't really until I was introduced to Pilates, clinical Pilates by my daughter um, and I went to some clinical Pilates classes and noticed that my back was feeling better and then I realised it wasn't actually my back, it was my glute muscle that had, had, uh, had been injured and I hadn't healed it properly or something had gone on with it but Pilates was the only thing that strengthened my back and helped me get off my couch and become a more vibrant version of me, which is really what I wanted to have. So movement as we age is just um, amazing for keeping us healthy, keeping our mental health clear, keeping our bodies strong, uh, learning about keeping your sense of balance on both feet so you can prevent falls and not fall over and hurt yourself. So movement is um, particularly important for me and for everyone, I'm sure. So how are you going to do this change? Who are you going to help or grab, bring on board as your little team to help you? So there's plenty of avenues for you out there in the world. Um, there's local groups that can help you 
support you because you might find as you begin a change in eating that you might lose some of your friends that's just that's just what happens it's, don't, you don't actually lose them they just have a different mindset to you and they think why are you doing what you're doing and there's lots of questions and the best thing you can do is be an example to those people or your friends to share what you know but you also need to have other people around you to help you keep filling that bucket of knowledge and positivity because things are changing so quickly in the in the science of low carb healthy fats that we all have to try and keep up with it to keep ourselves um, in the know so who are you going to use a health coach is great local people like a facebook group a facebook community the people at the markets that you might have met um, are places that you can find similar people uh, that might be of a mindset meetup groups there's meetup groups around that are healthier healthy lifestyle type groups it's important to find your why so i've sat in many a conference over the years and been told that i need to find my why and uh, i've thought oh yeah the why the old why thing but i can say that that is actually very true you do need to find your why and it's probably staring at you smack bang in your face and you don't even know that it's there but for me my why is used to be that I wanted to lose weight so that might be your why and why might be oh I want to lose 10 kilos I've got a wedding to go to and I want to look fabulous in a new dress and that's great we have to start with a why of some point but my why has finally slowly changed over to just wanting to be healthy you know I want to have good um, blood glucose control I want to have a clarity of mind I want to have some muscle tone on my body whatever that's going to be for me is whatever it's going to be I want to have good healthy relationships with my family and around me and that's my why and eating a low carb real food um, diet or a I'm not even going to call it a diet way of living helps me do that because when you're fueling your body properly when you're feeding your brain with healthy fats when you are looking after your heart health when you're building your muscle strength so that you can get through the day and not feel tired all of those things fall into place and all of those things relate to your body composition changing um, the reason I don't use the word diet is because I feel like real food healthy fats are the way that we should be eating and the diet that everyone is on is the high sugar high carb low fat diet that hasn't served us well so I feel like there's a real divide and I want to be eating the food that's made for human beings to eat I don't want to eat the packaged food that comes from the supermarket that's serving me no purpose that's just making my body work hard to digest it and not getting any goodness out of it so my why has changed from trying to lose body fat and be this what I viewed as the perfect shape to just wanting to be healthy and that's has really changed my body composition learning to self-love and be compassionate when I make changes that stir me up and don't feel comfortable my why is about looking after me and so you need to find your why so how will you do this by setting goals by allowing yourself to make changes that might not go exactly how you want them to go by learning to let yourself practice this new way of living this new way of thinking that can only bring you joy and health and happiness and longevity and that's for me that's that's my why and my how all in one so when can you do this you can do this right now you can make that choice right now to begin this journey of um, self-discovery of uh, really looking at the reasons digging deep to yourself about why am I doing this 
you can you can start those choices now. There doesn't have to be a tomorrow. There doesn't have to be, oh, I'll start on Monday morning at eight o'clock when I'm at work, or I'll just get over the weekend. It can be now because it will be a journey of time. It's not going to be a change that's quick, hip to jig and we're done. You know, the real learning comes from the journey. Um, and yeah, I can't really express that enough to you. The learning comes from the journey and the changes come along with the journey. It's so, it's so much fun, so much fun once you're on, on the, the pathway. Um, so choosing a health coach that you can resonate with, choosing a health coach that has been on your journey that will have an understanding of where you're coming from, of where you're going, that will um, uplift you, fill you with confidence, give you choices, help you to navigate through the mindset changes that will wax and wane and come and go. Finding a health coach that's accessible, as well as finding a GP that will support you, that will help you to understand the numbers on the blood test, that will help you to see uh, where you're progressing and where you're making good choices, because those numbers don't lie. The numbers of blood tests are a great tool to help you see where you need to be or where you can be and see yourself going along the path forwards. Supportive friends and, as I've said, an online com community are, are great places to go for support for each other. What is my special, my summit special, which you will find a link to in the notes below uh, or on my website, is a coaching pack, a coaching pack for $250 for two months. It's, it includes four half hour Zoom calls and a lovely downloadable booklet with some recipes in it for low carb bread, which is why I've got this picture here, because I know for me, when I began the low carb journey, bread was just a thing I thought I would never live without, you know, and I don't eat bread now, but you have to be kind to yourself and find things to switch out till you realize the benefit or you see the benefit of the new way of eating and then it becomes easier. But so there's a recipe for a beautiful low carb bread in the pack. There will be an exercise plan, just some simple Pilates moves that you can do at home that don't take up too much of your time. Um, there'll be some mindset uh, places to write notes, to uh, mark your journey and see where you're going. There is access to me via email whenever you care to, to, to drop a line and I'll drop a line back. So that's my amazing summit special and um, the bread is something else to delight in. It's gorgeous. So how do you find me? That's my email address. That is my Facebook address. I've just started a low carb Perth um, Facebook site. Um, my website is Inner Evolution. That's been a name that's been with me for a long time now and it talks to me when I say Inner Evolution. It's about evolving from your inside, which is all about um, low carb, real food. That's my Instagram handle. I had to say handle because it sounds like a truckie. Um, I'm not so good with updating Facebook and Instagram, but I am on my goal to get better at doing that. So there'll be some more updates uh, coming along for people that care to look. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening for giving me your time because I know that it's so valuable and I hope that you've taken at least one idea away from my presentation that you can share with anyone that wants to listen and soon you will find yourself talking the low carb real food talk with everyone that you meet because you'll feel so good and your skin will be bright and your eyes will be bright and your mindset will be clear and that is all that we need to have. So take care of yourselves and I hope to hear from you all soon. Bye.